Hello and welcome to the second part of my guide about how to set up logic for your flying vehicle in Robocraft 2. This second part will be all about how to set up the hover function to be able to stay very close to the ground. If you missed the first part, um, you can just check my videos to find it. It's about how to set up steering and how to properly balance your robot in terms of center of thrust and center of lift. Before we set up the actual logic for the smooth hover function, I want to spend some time explaining exactly how the sensors that we use for this work. In Robocraft 2, you got these distance sensors. They return a value between 0 and 1. And the key word here is between, which means they can return the value 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Uh, it's not just 1 or 0. And the way it works is that uh, if you set a certain distance, so for example, this one is set to 10. Now, I don't know if there's exactly 10 cubes here. I suspect it's not. But if it would be 10 cubes here, like 9, okay, so this is 9 cubes away. So 10 cubes away, anything further than that, and it will return 0. If it's 9 cubes away, it will return 0 0.1. If it's 1 cube away, it will return 1. So the closer to the sensor the target is, the higher value it will return. This is very important. Now, keeping that in mind, so the way the anti-gravity cubes work is that they also accept a value between zero and one. With values close to zero, providing very little lift, and values close to or being one, provide very good lift. This means that we can use this to control the power output depending on what the sensors actually detect. So just imagine this being the ground now and this sitting on the belly of the robot and when the ground closes in the closer the ground gets to the sensor the higher the output value of the anti-grav cube will become. So for example in this case the sensor would output a value closer to 1 than this sensor and that means this cube would provide greater lift than this one. If you have several sensors connected to the same cube, so if we do something like this, they will add the values. So if you connect this one here, now this anti-grav cube will only get the value from this sensor, while this anti-grav cube will give or have the power of both the values from these sensors, so twice the lift. Now we can actually look at all this as well visually. So the anti-gravity cubes actually have an effect where they shine brighter when they got high power and are a bit like dimmer light when they're on low power. So you can clearly see here that this one is dimmer than this one meaning less power and that's because this sensor is closer to this little slab of cubes than, what, than this. As well as the other thing I mentioned like these two together is connected to this one. So this one is shining brighter than this one because this one got more power. So with this knowledge, it's quite easy to make a function that makes our little robot hover close above the ground whenever we want it to. So let's return to this robot to make our hover function. First, I'm just gonna make some space here for the logic for the hover function. So we, we want a way to toggle the hover function on and off because we don't want it on all the time. Uh, so let's start by doing that. An easy way to add in like an if statement without any loss of data is that we could use this little bit cube that can be on and off in combination with a math cubes multiplier. So what we'll do is we connect this one and the toggle to our pilot chair where is our pilot chair? There it is. And let's put it on crouch. We could put it on like run or something else as well. It doesn't really matter. We just have to decide what key we want for toggling on our, or off our hover function. Um, and we take the current state of this as one input. And here we have the other input deciding the power for our anti-grav cubes. We're gonna fix that now. First, We'll just connect this to all of the anti-grav cubes. So 
So I got two sensors on this craft sitting over here. If I would connect this input towards the other input here, this would actually work. It wouldn't be a good way to do it. It would be problematic in some cases, but it would work. So let's just check what happens right now if we enter into a test area. So I had uh, the hover function on crouch. So let's activate that. You can see that I'm floating a bit up and down here, but I'm definitely floating above ground. It's not that steady, but it is indeed working. So you might float higher up than you would like to, or lower than you would like to. And an easy way to address that would be to change the distance that the sensor measure. You can put the sensors at a value between 100 and 1. So let's put 100 here, for example. You can now see that we are hovering, but a lot higher than before. The number here to hover at your desired height will depend on the weight of the robot, how you made the rest of the function for hovering, uh, and stuff like that. So you can just keep experimenting with this number to reach the desired height. So now let's get back to the problems with this. I mentioned earlier in this video that these ones are additive, uh, which also means that the height will hover, will change with this type of function we have right now, if one of them falls off. So let's imagine for now that someone shoots at us and this one drops. Now suddenly we'll just get half the power to our anti-grav cubes, which means we are very sensitive to damage. If we get a bit damaged, there's a big risk our hover function won't work anymore. And an easy way to do that, that will work regardless if you actually decide to put like five or six or, or 10 of these sensors just to have a lot of redundancy, it will still work, is to not connect them directly here. But we do a little bit in between. There is something called an average mat block. What that one does, it's just, it takes the input and then outputs the average. So if we put that one here, uh, let's move this one down. And we connect both the inputs. This will be the same thing as our last function, except instead of actually take the sum of these two, it will take the average. Uh, if we enter now, of course, we will have less power to our anti-grav cubes. And we're a bit too close to the ground now, but we can easily solve that by just increasing this. So let's try with 70 here instead and see if this is more or less correct. I think this looks quite all right. You want it low enough to be able to kind of sneak inside of buildings to be able to shoot at the towers uh, and high enough to not constantly bump into the ground. So we already got something working. Uh, we got a hover function and we can switch to flying high up. Um, if we switch between the two, we actually have to break a little bit um, the fall by activating flight mode a little bit before hitting the ground because the hover mode doesn't have enough lift or doesn't provide enough lift to break the fall. Just enough lift to like, keep us above, above ground, right? So you have to do some little manual tweaking when going fast down from a high altitude, but that's quite all right. Personally, I like a visual indicator of if I have hover mode activated or not. So let's actually connect that right now. Um, what I want to do here is first a visual indicator if my flight mode is activated and I have some small lamps down here. So let's connect those ones. Now, if I activate this bit over here, that makes us fly. It will also activate those lamps. And we do the same with this one, but to this lamp up here instead, and this lamp over here. This is of course not necessary, but it, I think at least for me, it's creating a quality of life feature for myself. So if we activate hover mode now, we can see the visual indication of that. And if we, on top of that, activate flight mode, we get the visual indication here. 
So it's really easy now to spot for me what type of mode I have activated. Or if I have both activated at the same time. From here, we can choose to complicate stuff a bit. We might want a smoother curve to not move as much up and down. Uh, right now we have a linear power curve and we might not want that. Uh, so one way to accomplish that is for example by doing an extra multiplier block. So we're going to connect it up here like this. And then we just multiply it by itself here. So we take the output from the average block here. You just multiply it by itself and we use that as an output. We will now have a lower value far from ground, uh, but it will ramp up in a different way. Uh, this results normally in a, a bit smoother hovering. We won't like move as much up and down as we used to before. So this is improving our hover functionality a bit. Here we can see the result and we're not jumping as much in height. Everything we do from here on is only adding bonus, trying to tweak our formula a bit. But it's nothing we really need to do. We already solved the problem with hovering. So this was all for this guide. Check out the previous part of this guide if you want to. It's on the YouTube as well. Uh, give a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe if you haven't done that already. Bye bye.